like this, the last thing I want to think about is reviewing video games right now. Ethan, hurry up, it happened again. It happened again? Yeah. Well, at least it's not Mario Sunshine. Yeah, I know. Nope, I'm out. I guess I'll talk about the new Super Mario Bros. series then. And once again, my vacation was abruptly ruined. And off goes the vacation button down, and on goes the work button down. So we got here today. Oh, would you look at that? The new Super Mario Bros. series. Video games have evolved immensely since they were created. We have better graphics, better gameplay, better stories, and overall better experiences. But before we could get to all that, we have to look back to where it all started. The backbone of video games. There's a ton of things that can be considered the backbone, like Tetris, The Legend of Zelda, Doom, stuff to really kickstart a future of video games. By that, I don't mean the first video game to do that, I mean the most notable video game to do that. And in our case, we're talking about Super Mario. Because who else would I be talking about? Mario pretty much defined the platforming genre. Super Mario Bros. on the NES was an instant classic. The game controlled well, the physics felt great, and the music, oh so iconic. I could play any song from that game to a random person on the street, and I'm sure they'd know what it's from. Mario is known worldwide, and for good reason too. Super Mario Bros. was a very easy to grasp concept with a simple premise that even a three-year-old could understand. Princess captured? Go save her! Mario was immediately understood by everyone and quickly became the biggest gaming icon. Mario was unstoppable. Not too long after Super Mario Bros. was released, Super Mario Bros. USA was released, well, to us as Super Mario Bros. 2. But in Japan, they got Super Mario The Lost Levels, which didn't come out till America till later, but that's not what we're talking today. Because with a critical success like Super Mario Bros., it would be idiotic not to release another game the two games still did amazing, and then Super Mario Bros. 3 came out, and that game really blew the others out of the water because it really capitalized on the greatness Mario could be. Eight new worlds, great new levels, cool power-ups, how could it get any better than this? Oh, we were just getting started. Great 2D platformer after great 2D platformer released, but then Mario did the unthinkable and redefined the platforming genre. Again, Mario 64 came out, then after that Mario Sunshine, and in between, a ton of spin-offs, but with all that going on, something didn't happen. Mario's 2D adventures seemed to be put on hold to help expand and define gaming. But in 2004, a new handheld Nintendo console was about to destroy the market. And what better way to sell it than to announce a grand return to format. In 2006, New Super Mario Bros. DS released on the Nintendo DS. New Super Mario Bros. was Mario's grand return to 2D, introducing a couple new things. New power-ups, new moves, great new visuals, and no hesitation, everyone could enjoy this game new and old. It was the reason to buy a DS, because it was Mario. Pure, simple Mario fun. The game had this label thrown on it, new. It was the start of the new Super Mario Bros. series. Throwing the label new on something doesn't mean it's going to stay that way forever. Eventually, it's going to grow old. And grow old it did.
After the new Super Mario Bros. series released on the DS, the new Super Mario Bros. series released on the Wii. Then after that, that's when things went downhill in my opinion. Two new Super Mario Bros. games released in the same year, both looking almost indistinguishable from the other, with little to no change from the Wii, and people began to grow slightly annoyed in the little change to Mario. And just when people were getting tired of the new Super Mario Bros. series, Nintendo did the unthinkable and pulled something that bothered even the most hardcore of Mario fans. They released the same game on a new console, and I love the new Super Mario Bros. series. I grew up with these games. But man, did this bother me! And nothing Mario related bothers me! Now the real question is, are these games really that identical? I figure we'll take a look at each one and then we can decide afterwards. Introduced in 2006, New Super Mario Bros. was Mario's grand return to 2D platforming, selling over 30 million copies worldwide. This game was for everyone, not only new players, but old players too. It was a return to classic Mario. It may have been a return to classic Mario, but what exactly was new? Well, to be honest, a ton! To start, a brand new moveset. Mario could now not only wall jump, but triple jump just like in the 3D Mario games, which I think was a really good addition, and it makes 2D feel a lot more fluent than it used to. With the new moveset, we also got a bundle of new power-ups. Okay, maybe not a bundle. So the mini mushroom here, it's a bit self-explanatory. It makes you small, but you can jump higher, but when you're small, you can't jump on enemies, you have to ground pound on them to kill them. This power-up isn't the best thing, but it's usually used to access secret worlds and find secret exits, kind of like a hard mode. Next up, we have the Mega Mushroom. Big. And then you destroy everything in your path. It's a fun gimmick that does get kind of old after a while. But you turn big and kind of just break the whole level. It's like, yeah, neat. Finally, the blue shell. Now this one, this is quite the addition. If you pick up enough speed, Mario will go into the shell and destroy everything in his path. But be careful, unless you let go of the run button, you'll keep spinning with no control. Honestly, a really fun power-up with a neat twist. Now, out of these three power-ups, I definitely think the blue shell is the best one. But out of the three, it never returned. Other than the power-ups and the moveset, I do believe this game really set the tone for what the Mushroom Kingdom would become from here on out. By that, I mean generic grassy hills, the desert, the ice world, and stuff like that. This game defined a lot more than we think. Now, I've already done a video on New Super Mario Bros. DS. This game is a classic. It has one of the best multiplayer experiences. It's also got mini games, but I've already done a video on this, so I don't want to cover a whole lot more. So. We can go on to New Super Mario Bros. Wii. Man, was this the game to have. New Super Mario Bros. Wii sure was quite the eye-opener. The big deal with this bad boy was multiplayer. Before release, 2D Mario could be played with two players taking turns, in most circumstances. At this point, it was already 2009. Multiplayer was booming. So, this became the first 2D Mario with four players, and people loved it. Selling over 30 million copies worldwide, this game had it all. New power-ups, new level, and two toads! What else could you possibly need? Well, this was not only 2D Mario with four players, but it was 2D Mario on the Wii. If you owned a Wii, you owned a copy of New Super Mario Bros. Wii. Let me rephrase. Everyone owned New Super Mario Bros. Wii. And for good reason, too. This game was great. The level design was on point, and on top of that, multiplayer, and it introduced some new things like the penguin suit and the propeller mushroom, and in my opinion, it redefined the ice flower in a good way. But anyway, to the power-ups, the penguin suit lets you slide on ice, freeze enemies, and swim better underwater. It's a simple yet solid power-up. But then, we have my favorite power-up, the propeller mushroom. This power-up lets you fly straight up in the air, and either glide back down or drill back down to land. I like this power-up because at first it sounds really broken, but in reality, it's executed really well. And I really like the outfit you get with it. But new power-ups aren't everything. The level design, just like the DS, is amazing. Each level's a joy to play and some have very memorable designs. And in my opinion... And please don't kill me over this. I think this is one of the best 2D Mario games. And I don't mean just the new Super Mario Bros. series. I mean as a whole. 
To its core, it's just pure enjoyable Mario. I grew up with this game and to this day, it's still one of my favorite games. But the series was just beginning. Because in 2012, New Super Mario Bros. 2 released. Now, I loved New Super Mario Bros. Wii. It was my first 2D Mario and my favorite 2D platformer. But I don't remember the build up to its release simply because I wasn't old enough. But for New Super Mario Bros. 2, I remember seeing the first trailer for it in my basement on my old iPod Touch. Where that thing is now is beyond me. But man, was that thing a good iPod. But anywho, let's take a look at what New Super Mario Bros. 2 did to improve from the last. Uh-oh. Yeah, this one kinda just happened to get 2D Mario on the 3DS. The game does bring back a classic power-up from Mario 3, but at the time, 3D Land was doing the same thing. Other than that, for power-ups, it added the gold flower, which turned things into coins. Coins were the main gimmick of this game. See if you can collect a million coins, as it said on the box. Now. Did I really take the time to do that? Yeah. Now, I know if you collect 9 million or something, you get a better title screen, but I was satisfied with 1 million. With this game, we also have Coin Rush, which lets you play through three levels and you need to collect the most coins as possible while doing so. But that also came at a price. Literally. Some of the levels were paid DLC, which at the time I was only 10, so in my mind, DLC was the dumbest thing on the planet. Why pay for stuff in the game that I already paid for? I now understand the point of DLC, but hey, at the time I was 10 years old and broke. And look at me now, I'm 19. This game also featured two player co-op, which I think was a really fun addition and really well for handheld. But other than that, this was Mario. That's the best way I can put it. But if I'm gonna be honest, the level design is really, really good in this game. Yes, the coins make it easy, but yeah, because you know, you get extra life. But this one, I can't help but get sucked into every time I play it. I have spent a lot of time with this game, and honestly, I can say with a good conscience that if New Super Mario Bros. Wii wasn't four players, this might be my favorite 2D Mario. But anywho, just as things were starting to blend together, a couple months later, yet another New Super Mario Bros. game came out. New Super Mario Bros. U, and here's where things start to pick up speed downhill. Now, I love New Super Mario Bros. 2. I know I just said it, it could have been one of my favorite 2D platformers, and it really is one of my favorite 2D platformers. Wii is still the best in my opinion. As much as I like it, I do know its flaws. I just have fun with it, that's why I like it that much. The level design is fun, but it reuses, I don't think it has an original track. It reuses a lot of music from Wii, and really the main gimmick is coins and that makes the game insanely easy because you it kind of eliminates the purpose of one-ups but hey you people like that nowadays i don't i like when i get game over but you guys like when you don't get game over you think it's a nuisance sorry got a bit off topic there anyway here's where the ball really started rolling downhill but no matter let's take a look at new super mario bros u Two new Super Mario Bros. games released in the same year, and this one didn't feel any different from the last. I mean, it had a challenge mode, which was kind of cool. I really liked that. And boost mode was a little mode where you collect coins and the screen moves faster. But you can play as your Miis? This can be in the game! Other than that, there was one new power-up. The rest returned from past games. The new one was the flying squirrel thing. It lets you glide and you get a little boost. Not my favorite. It feels like a glorified raccoon leaf, but I mean, it's not a bad power up. Overall, just like the rest, New Super Mario Bros. U has amazing level design, but things really started to blend together at this point. But don't worry, someone was about to shake things up. In 2013, Luigi took the spotlight. It was the year of Luigi with a ton of Luigi related stuff happening. But nothing was bigger than New Super Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, a return to that 2001 GameCube classic, Luigi's Mansion. And Luigi U was good too. Luigi U is New Super Mario Bros. U, but make all the levels harder and kick Mario to the curb. Honestly, I thought this was a nice change of pace. The extra difficulty was welcome, and I had a ton of fun playing the game. And would you look at that, we covered all of the New Super Mario Bros. series. I'm not leaving any of them out. Nothing at all. Not a single one. I'm sorry. 
So, with a series people were already getting tired of because the games were too repetitive, Nintendo really just ported that same game on the Wii U to the Switch and called it Deluxe by adding Toadette. If some of you weren't already outraged, you probably were now, and this game spawned some really, really bad demons. Now, I mean, the game is fine, but really. My favorite thing about the new Super Mario Bros. series was new levels, and this game laughed in my face and made me pay $60 again. Now that we've looked at each one, remember what I said before? Slapping the logo new on anything is bound to be a bad idea because eventually it's going to run its course. Here's the biggest problem with these games. In the end, they all seem to blend together. Classic 2D Mario in the 80s and 90s had the same type of release schedule, only you could tell the difference between games like Mario 2 and Mario 3. I can show you a picture of one of these games from the new Super Mario Bros. series and you'll probably end up doing what I did on my stats test last summer. Randomly guess. That's the issue with these games, they're way too similar. But they all sold really well because there's one thing that all these games have in common. They're classic 2D Mario and it proves that 2D Mario can stand the test of time. No matter how repetitive, it's gonna sell well. And that's why we get games like New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. And it's honestly such a shame that the series is looked at this way because I have some great memories with these games. This is the Mario I grew up playing. New Super Mario Bros. Wii was my first 2D Mario. New Super Mario Bros. DS gave me a ton of fun on the bus rides home. New Super Mario Bros. 2 was fun on car trips with my brother. New Super Mario Bros. U was fun with my cousins. The game series really does mean a lot to me. Not including New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, this means the last 2D Mario platformer was released in 2012. In November, that game is going to be like 10 years old. And that sucks! 10 years without a new 2D Mario and no new one in sight? Honestly kinda hurts, cause I love 2D Mario. Now I know what you're thinking, oh, well we have Mario Maker 2, there's no need for a new 2D Mario. And honestly, I hear that all the time and it bothers me every single time. Mario Maker levels are their own separate thing from normal Mario games because the way Nintendo designs a level is just so good and so much fun. And I miss classic 2D Mario. I can't go back to endless easy or endless expert on Super Mario Maker 2. It's just not fun anymore. Each one of the new Super Mario Bros. games are great on their own, but as a series, they're kinda... Eh. And it's a shame, because I love these games, it's a masterclass in platforming, and it's always so much fun to play with friends. In most cases. Most of the time, they just throw you off the map, which is also fun in its own. But, as much as I want to defend this series, New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe really slapped me in the face because all I want in this series is new levels. That's literally all I can ever ask for. And that one just ported the same levels. Hurts every time. Now, I know what I said last two weeks ago, I think at this point, about how I'll be back the week after that, I'm not going to take a break. And I will admit this is on me. So, we went on vacation over spring break and I forgot all of my recording equipment and it was too late so I couldn't do any of my video. Really sorry I missed last week, but we'll go back to our normal schedule this week. After this video, I've got another one planned for this weekend. Hopefully, hopefully it'll be a good one. But I really want to take my time on this video because the new Super Mario Bros. series... The rest of the new Super Mario Bros. series means so much to me and I had to make sure it was a good video. And I drew a lot of art for this, and I've been extremely busy this week, but hopefully we'll get back to my normal schedule next week, and thank you so much for watching.